Eduardo Nere, uh, campusreform.org digital reporter. Uh, he's campusreform.org digital reporter. Eduardo. Click on us, Eduardo Nere. <laughs> Joining us to weigh in on the campus confusion. Hey, Eduardo, it's good to see you. We're joined now by Eduardo Nere. Eduardo Nere. Eduardo Nere. Eduardo, our inside guy here. Uh, you're one of our show favorites. To be fair, look, I think you'd find a lot of conservative students who would say they wouldn't want to date someone with different views either. I myself wouldn't date a socialist. You know, she'd probably <laughs> want all this free stuff and expect me to pay for it. But again, I think that's, I, I think that's, <laughs> oh, that's good. That was that, that, very good, young man. So people think, oh, well, we can just throw more money at education and it'll solve our problems. But that's the very reason why tuition, the cost of higher ed is so expensive in the first place. Well, these people are delusional. Look, you should never accept definitions offered by liberals at face value. They often use terms that reflect the opposite of what is true. So you see support for candidates like Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren because they're offering free college, free stuff. And so these students hear that without understanding what those policies mean and they say I want in on that I want some of that free stuff this is bad news for the Biden campaign the fact that college students who are a key constituency for the Democratic Party are down on Biden isn't good news let me explain why immigration is such an important issue heading into this election voters don't have to look very far just look at the horrible terrorist attack that took place in Israel over the weekend where you had Islamic jihadist terrorists cross into Israel's borders carry out that attack that is why immigration is an important issue. So you have a lot of Republicans and Democrats who are for more aid to Israel, and you have a lot of Republicans and Democrats who are against it. That's going to be the Democrat strategy. It was their strategy in 2020. It was a strategy last year in the midterms, and in some sense it worked. So Republicans should consider a, a, an alternative point to this. The yeah. message is Donald Trump is a threat. He's a threat to democracy. He's a threat to the country. And Joe Biden, you may not like him. He may have a bad record, but he's the only one who can stop him. Yeah. This notion that, oh, you know, Hispanics would never support a socialist because you look at countries like Venezuela, Cuba and Nicaragua, and, and those were socialist countries that a lot of people fled, right? But that's actually not the case. Colleges and universities and our students are attempting to erase parts of history they don't like. It's historical revisionism and it's disgusting. I think that's the key difference with President Trump. So you look at what DeSantis has done as governor. He's instituted E-Verify. He's banned sanctuary cities. He's made it difficult for employers to hire illegal immigrants. And unlike Donald Trump, who talked about sending illegal immigrants to Democrat-run sanctuary cities, Governor DeSantis actually did that. And where it goes to the extreme that I think was d depicted in my video is when people make assumptions about someone's character and about their heart, you know, without even giving them a chance, without even getting to know them. But this is what happens on campuses when you put feelings over facts. But it's also very courageous for President Trump to take upon this issue of pro-life very head on. If they were in the real world, they would understand that that free college is not free at all. Any speaker who comes to campus, students are now encouraged, hey, if you disagree with the speaker, if you want to feel harmed or, or feel uncomfortable, you can shut them down because, of course, their safety is, is apparently the most important thing on a campus. I We're telling the next generation, hey, you can, you can live the high life, you can live with outside of your means, and the government will bail you out. We cover a lot of stories where professors are out on the record telling students, President Trump is like Hitler. President Trump is a Nazi. And so when students are receiving that information day in and day out, it's almost no surprise that they would think these insane things about terrorist leaders or these insane things about their own president. This is going to expand beyond Christopher Columbus. We've already seen it with the founding fathers. We've seen it with history in our own country. And if Americans don't take a stand on this, we're going to see this next generation of college students go out into the real world and try to scrub our history. I'm going to give you a try. What do you think? What year did we get our independence? 1970 something, 74, something like that. 1979. Oh man, Eduardo, what's going on with these students not knowing any history? History is not a binary choice. You don't have to pretend that Columbus didn't exist and that he didn't discover the new world just to talk about the native people. This trial has gone on way too long. It's boring. It's dragged out. And frankly, nobody's watching it. It would be absurd and ridiculous to set the precedent of handing out a student visa for someone to come to the country and take a class online. It's certainly not a precedent they want to be setting. I think it's a disgrace. You look at that situation and you say, well, wait a sec. Aren't there millions of Americans across the country who struggle to pay th for school? Don't you think these institutions could help them first before helping, you know, an illegal immigrant student who broke our laws? The polls show that Hispanics are very open to supporting socialism. A recent poll showed that 62 percent of Hispanics have a positive or somewhat positive view of socialism. And if you get rid of campus police, who is going to protect them? If there's a crime on or near campus, who are they going to call? And so if there's any way they can open, albeit even in a reduced capacity, even if they can bring some students back, these schools are going to want to do that for financial reasons of their own. But again, if classes are able to go online so quickly and you're able to do all your learning from a computer, then what are these fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars tuition fees going to? And I think that's a question that's definitely worth asking. Nobody said online education and online degrees were supposed to cost the same thing as an in-person class. After all, 
what is the point of having a multi-billion dollar endowment if you can't actually use it, if it's so tied up? For them to now turn around and raise tuition on the very American families, on the very American taxpayer who bailed them out is not an appropriate solution. 